Hi, let's talk about hydrogen bonding. Very powerful. Uh, hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force. This is the force that holds molecules together. And remember that word molecule is very, very specific for covalent compounds. So when you have a nonmetal and a nonmetal come together, share electrons, it makes a molecule. So intermolecular forces, this is taking groups of molecules, so like water, 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 water molecules, and holding them together to make a solid or liquid. Um, so intermolecular forces, as a reminder, um, those are the forces that take molecules and holds those molecules together to create the phases of solids or liquids. Remember, gases don't have any intermolecular forces because they're 100% separate, no attraction or repulsion. Okay, now of all the intermolecular forces, Hydrogen bonding is ET bond. It is number one. It is the strongest. Um, so it's the strongest intermolecular force, strongest IMF. Hydrogen bonding happens between fluorine, high oxygen, and nitrogen, and hydrogen. Um, now, you don't have to have all four of those. You just have to have hydrogen with one of those. And I tell my students to help you remember this, think of the word FON. It's hydrogen plus FON fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. Now let me give you the quintessential examples, the basic examples. Um, I can have hydrogen and fluorine. There's my Lewis dot structure. And that is going to have hydrogen bonding when another hydrogen, um, another hydrofluoric acid comes close to it. Um, and I'll show you how that happens. Let me give you another example. We could have ammonia. So here is ammonia, NH3. That is going to have hydrogen because I see hydrogen directly bonded to nitrogen. Notice that word that I used, directly bonded. If I had um, something like this, H, and I'm looking just at this, if I'm looking at one molecule, because the hydrogen is not directly um, bonded to that carbon, I'd say it doesn't have hydrogen bonding. It has to have hydrogen directly bonded to one of those three. So kind of tricky, kind of tricky there. Um, a cyanic acid, hydrocyanic acid, would not have hydrogen bonding because hydrogen isn't bonded to nitrogen, it's bonded to the carbon. So it's not just having um, hydrogen with one of those in a compound, it's a direct bond between the hydrogen and the fluorine. And I'll explain that why in just a second. I'm going to give you one more example with the oxygen. Our classic example is water. So we have oxygen with its two long pairs and hydrogen. Again, notice that hydrogen is directly bonded to the oxygen, so water is going to have hydrogen bonding. <clears throat> now, this is permanent. Whenever hydrogen is bonded to one of those three elements, it will always have hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding is permanent. Um, it's really just a type of dipole-dipole. Um, so it's a polar bond, but it's a crazy um, strong polar bond. It means that the electrons really, really do not share equally. Um, so notice right here, hydrogen shares one electron, fluorine shares one electron. Because fluorine is so electronegative, this electron is attracted to this nucleus and the electron spends more time on this side of the molecule, the fluorine side of the molecule, than the hydrogen. And it creates this polarity where there is a partial negative on the fluorine and a partial positive on the hydrogen. So notice how I wrote that lowercase d um, from the Greek alphabet, delta, um, and that we read a partial positive, partial negative. Now this is not a full on charge. This is different from taking a sodium ion that loses an electron and a chloride ion that gains an electron. Partial is not equivalent to a whole plus one charge. This would be a fraction of a charge. Maybe it's um, a, a 0.6 or a 0.3. It's not a full positive charge like you'd see on, on sodium or chlorine. That's why we say partial. It's not one full charge. Um, now, albeit, there is still a charge. There's still a charge. Um, and because of that polarity, this electron spending more time on the side of the fluorine, we have this electron density that gives it that partial negative. So it becomes really like a baby magnet, a tiny magnet with a negative side and a positive side. This really is a result of Coulombic attraction. Um, it's just going to be those charges attracted opposite 
the negative electron from this hydrogen is attracted, more attracted to this positive nucleus than the electron from this fluorine is attracted to the positive nucleus of the hydrogen. They just don't share equally because the electrons aren't necessarily attracted to opposite um, nuclei in the same, with the same force. And it's because of the electronegativity of that fluorine, great electronegativity of the fluorine. Um, so that's, you know, if we're looking at theory, that's the foundation of hydrogen bonding. Um, it's that these molecules um, have a polar bond. The electrons spend more time on one side of the molecule than the other one, giving a partial negative and positive side. Um, now, if you have questions about polarity, watch my video about polarity, and it goes into it more. Um, so here, you'll recall with polarity, whenever we have a lone pair, um, that tells us that that's going to be the partial negative. So we have um, our electron density more negative on this side of the molecule, and on the ammonia down here, we have, by default, the partial positive. And with um, water, excuse me, partial negative, because we've got two lone pairs, wow. And so the hydrogens are going to be the partial positive. Um, now, I did want to remind you, even though this is really strong, is the strongest of all the intermolecular forces, it is by far definitely weaker than intramolecular forces, I-N-T-R-A. And you'll recall intramolecular forces are the forces that hold atoms together in a compound. So the force that holds hydrogen and fluorine together, that's a covalent bond. They're sharing electrons. Well, that covalent bond right there is stronger than the intermolecular force of hydrogen bonding, of another hydrofluoric acid coming and attracting to we'd have um, a hydrogen uh, bonding happen between this hydrogen and that fluorine. We have a hydrogen bond happen between that fluorine and that hydrogen down there. Um, so just a reminder, intermolecular forces, hydrogen bonding is the strongest. Um, that holds molecules together in a solid or in a liquid translating, but definitely weaker than the bond that actually holds atoms together. Uh, now, let me draw, uh, because you're expected to be able to draw these. I'm going to do the HF again, uh, so you can see it a little bit cleaner. So here's my hydrofluoric acid, and I know it's going to have hydrogen bonding with another molecule. What happens is it will always line up positive, negative, positive, negative as attracted like magnets. So I'll have another hydrofluoric acid move close to this, and we use three dots to indicate hydrogen bonding. Remember, it's really not a bond, it's just a force. I'm going to go one, two, three. That partial positive of this hydrogen is attracted to the partial negative of that fluorine. Likewise, one, two, three. I have hydrogen bonding between the partial negative of that fluorine and the partial positive of that hydrogen. Now let's do one with the ammonia. Um, I'll use a different color. It might be a little bit easier to see this. Um, so I have my one ammonia molecule. Another ammonia is going to come close to this, and you're thinking, how does it orient itself? The answer is always positive to negative. So I see a partial positive, which means the negative is going to be attracted to that. And what's the negative side? The negative side is the lone pair on the nitrogen. So this second ammonia will come and orient itself like this. The partial negative on that nitrogen, one, two, three, it's going to be attracted to the partial positive on that hydrogen. I could have another one move in, same thing. The nitrogen, that partial negative on the nitrogen is going to be attracted, one, two, three, to the partial positive of that hydrogen. Now it could be attracted to any of those three hydrogens. Um, I just do it to the one that's closest and easiest to write. Um, let's do it for water. So water, same thing. A water is going to move in and the um, positive and negatives are going to attract. So if I have a partial positive down here, that means the partial negative of the water is going to attract to the partial positives of those hydrogens. So for water, we actually do two. We can do two sets of three. That um, both of those hydrogens would be attracted to those lone pairs. Now, I've shown pure substances. I have just hydrofluoric acid or only ammonia, only water. We can also mix 
these um, if you have different molecules that have hydrogen bonding, they can do hydrogen bonding together. Uh, so let's do that with some of these. Let's take, for instance, um, let's take a hydrofluoric acid, and I know my partial negative, my partial positive, and let's say that I may put this in water. So how is this going to orient itself? Well, I could draw a number of ways. I could put a water next to the fluorine over here to put it off to the side. If that's negative, you know, the positive is going to be attracted to it. And what's the positive side? The hydrogen. So uh, we could do a hydrogen like this. That partial positive on that hydrogen will be attracted to the fluorine. One, two, three. Great, hydrogen bonding. Okay, another way that I could have drawn it. I have a partial positive on the hydrogen for hydrofluoric acid. If water moves in, the negative side will be attracted, that would be the oxygen. So this oxygen, that partial negative, would be attracted to that hydrogen. One, two, three. I'd have a little hydrogen bond there. Remember, it's a force. It's not an actual bond. It's not like ionic metallic covalent, covalent network. This is just a force, that positive negative attracting between the oxygen, that partial negative, and the hydrogen, the partial positive. Uh, let's do another one. Let's maybe take our ammonia and our water. How would those attract? Um, and I've seen this on AP, uh, where they will give one molecule and the student has to draw the second molecule and how it would do hydrogen bonding, how it attracts, what's the intermolecular force. So let's say on this one, it's written like this. We've got nitrogen and it's written something like that. And you and I have to draw the hydrogen bonding with the water molecule. Okay, so I'm going to draw my partial positive and negative. The lone pair, that's my partial negative. The hydrogens are the partial positive. So how will water move in? Water is going to attract a positive to that negative. So the positive is going to be my hydrogen. And then we've got the oxygen over here. So the partial negative and here's my partial positive side. So we will have an attraction with the hydrogen and the nitrogen. Um, I could also come over here and put a water. So that partial negative on the water is going to be attracted to uh, the hydrogen, which is a partial positive. So it's positive, negative, positive, negative. Crucial in this is going to be drawing Lewis dot structures and then labeling the partial positive and partial negative. So again, watch the polarity video if you need help doing that. Once you're able to do that, it's really easy. You just draw um, molecules that have the hydrogen with fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. You just always draw them, the partial positive attracting to the partial negative, and that's hydrogen bonding. Okay, nice. So remember, hydrogen bonding happens between molecules. I have said, yeah, this has hydrogen bonding, but you have to have a second molecule for hydrogen bonding to happen. It's going to have hydrogen bonding because hydrogen is directly bonded to fluorine, directly bonded to nitrogen, directly bonded to oxygen. Okay. Good work. Enjoy hydrogen bonding. Thank you.